Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 305, featuring part two of my interview with Mr. Alexei Pajitnov, the creator of Tetris. This part of the interview, we talk more about the creation of that game, a little bit about mysticism behind it, uh, how the pieces make you feel, some psychological stuff, and much, much more. A lot of great stuff here, so without further ado, here is Mr. Alexei Pajitnov. I'm kind of wondering if, you, if, if this computer that you've been working on had had graphics would you have made a different kind of game? Probably yes. The geometry is very, very, <laughs> uh, very wide and interesting area, uh, and ha has lots of very interesting visuals inside. By the way, uh, it's uh, it's not very, very much uh, kind of exploited yet. I didn't see too, my, too many very geometrical puzzles uh, around, so so probably he, uh, uh, it's a problem. It's a problem with human brains. People are not very good in geometry. Many people have bad mark in geometry in school, probably. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so uh, I uh, and when I start to program it and I put the rotational procedure for these pieces on the screen, they rotate so funny that uh, that the idea to make a real time game, so which kind of fly and rotate on on, on flight, came to my mind. And uh, the idea was very attractive, so I tried to imagine to put those pieces in a in a in a very dense form there. So, but I immediately realized that uh, the twelve shades of pentominoes are uh, are too much for, uh, for for this game. So I downsized the, those stuff to tetramino. And there are only five tetraminas in the world. Uh, only, only five shapes you could do out of four squares. But if you forbid to 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 flip them, then you have two extra shapes for 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 symmetrical forms. And uh, this uh, seven number is very magical, so 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 I love it immediately. So and uh, and I start to p to put together, uh, start to playing with those seven seven shapes. And when I when I make the, those main uh, stuff that, that you could uh, that you could move it left and and right and uh, down and and uh, rotate them, I realized that uh, it's not enough space to, to play real-time game for a while, for for, for reasonable amount of time. The, 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 my, my, my playing field filled, uh, filled up almost immediately in 30 seconds. So either, either I need to scroll it and make really, really long well, like, like a... So, so several latest version of Tetris exploit this opportunity, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> but that time I didn't like this idea because you don't see everything and you need to rely on the player's memory. It's not very good. So I I noticed that if you if you kind of fill up entire line, several lines, or an, but 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 fill up so this space. It's kind of dead. You can't do anything with it. You're done with it. So what's the reason to, to keep it on, on this very, very precious real estate on the screen, you know? So I try to, to get rid of it, take it from the screen, and, uh, and that was the, the very important moment for Tetris to, <laughs> to come in shape. I'm kind of intrigued by this. You had mentioned this, this sort of a mystical nature to these pieces and they, they it kind of reminds me of something archimedes or uh, uh pythagoras might might say you know it's just we kind of just look at numbers as a very abstract thing i guess in shapes and geometry but you seem to see you know almost have some kind of uh, mystical connection to it 
Uh, well, well, my background is mathematics, so I know that, well, well, it's either generally very mystical thing, either either no mystical at all if you if you attract your mind and look at formulas and whatever you know so basically it really depends on your attitude but in games the, there uh, there is some charm uh, sh- sh- charm of the object you are dealing with which is very close to 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 some mystics for example uh, rubik's cube if you try to do it yourself from the very beginning you somehow understand that it's a very big and serious mystery, save in those very simple and primitive kind of movement with, with just the small cubes around, you know. <laughs> it's interesting playing Tetris. I'll, and I see what you're saying, like that line piece and the cube and or the square. I mean, they do feel, they make you feel different ways when you see those pieces uh, falling oh, down. I can't yes. even begin to describe. It must be something uh, psychological, I guess, or... Yeah, know. and your your expectation how to put them together so their neighborhood is is something. So, so, sometimes you have no doubt that this piece should go exactly there. So you have you have really strong feeling about that, but and sometimes you feel that you do the very ambivalent move, which might might turn out good, might turn out bad. And probably people are very intrigued with those feelings. That's why they keep playing my game. <laughs> I'm a little curious when you were, when you finally got all the pieces together, so to speak, and you were playing this game that you had, you had created. Yeah, I mean, at what point did you, it seems like I read somewhere, maybe it was in the documentary where you were saying that you didn't really know if this would appeal to anybody else. Uh, maybe it was just something that appealed to you only. I mean, at what point did you finally realize, look, this is a, a really big hit I've got on my hands here? Well, uh, I realized that it's a very good game. I, I know that I'm I'm not very unusual person. I, 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 I like pretty much what the other people like, and I, and I hate what the other people hate. So I never distinguish myself from the other from the other players, so to speak. Well, I'm I might be a little bit more kind of addicted to the to the puzzle stuff, but but nothing exceptional. So as soon as I understood, I, I realized that this game kind of keep me so so <laughs> so strongly. I realized that uh, that the game is not bad at all, but I never expected to be that <laughs> that big, frankly. <laughs> You know, this yeah. is just, I mean, what it, what it, what I would like to see is a, a time machine so I could just go back to this uh, center and see people playing this game for the first time and not having any idea what it was and sl- eventually it dawning on everybody that, you know, hey, <laughs> this well, is an awesome yeah, game so, so, so somehow, somehow uh, the, 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 the first look at the game, when you look over the shoulder of the, of the person, it, it seems very simple for you to play and it's so obviously when this when the every piece should go you know for you but when you put your hands on your keyboard or whatever joypad uh, the, the, then you realize that it's not that simple and that's and you got and you got kind of challenged and hooked yeah some somehow it works that way and it always worked that way so my my colleagues look at the game and ask what's 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 so What's so special? What uh, what are you doing here? So let me try. <laughs> and when they tried, it was really hard to kind of pull them away and say, "Come on, I need to debug it and, and uh, decorate it more or whatever." <laughs> yes. Yeah, some people have said that Tetris was a, a really great destroyer of uh, productivity, you know, in the workplace. Mm. Uh, and I mean, some people even think it was some kind of a secret weapon to, <laughs> designed for that yeah, purpose. Yeah, but but you know the so so 
I, I, I spent lots of hours there, but I still feel that I, I did everything in life what uh, what I supposed to do. So I don't feel I, I really waste my time. But and Tetris helped me to little bit concentrate and focus and and uh, calm down and uh, order my feeling. I don't know. So I feel. Uh, I knew many people who who start their uh, job day with Tetris playing about 15 20 minutes every day like like a, like a, I don't know physical exercise and they and they feel really good uh, the rest of the day so that was that was the kind of the way to 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 get in the mood in the working mood for them uh, so, so basically, I I hate those words about wasting time. I think that yeah. uh, I uh, I I provide people with a really good time for their life. <laughs> so. yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. I'm kind of wondering, Alexi, uh, what kind of background you might have in psychology. You know, I understand before Tetris, you had made some some other sort of psychological games. I've seen them described. I don't know much other much about them though. Well, that uh, well, basically, basically, when I I I was young at the, at the, at the time when I just started my career, I I did a lot of stuff with computer. I tried to put together a very small operating system. I work as a system programmer, and I did a lot of research uh, stuff. I work with CAD CAM system with with ge geometry, with uh, with speech recognition, with with a lot. I tried practically all the areas of the computer applications, and at that time, you know, I feel that I do the tools for make it tools to make it tools for people to make money to to whatever. So I do very very and and. And direct impact on, on on people, and I think that this is just bullshit, and uh, and basically it is a way to make the computer useful right for, uh, for right for you and right now, right here when when you use it, and I think what kind of application could it be? So obviously it's a games. But it's also might be some kind of creative tools for you. That uh, that time it was it was just a dream because we didn't have too much graphics and all the hardware was was very very shabby yet. Uh, but but psychological stuff was one of those uh, of those area when you could really really get something useful and helpful from computer right right from the screen so i came to to psychologist and propose my my computer skills to put together some of their methods using computer and uh, i did work with several several professionals in psychology uh, put together their methods using computer so so basically that how I got my background, small background. I'm not professional psychologist at all, but I did work with lots of those people and on their very, very psych psychological stuff. So I got some background there. Did you ever work with Vygotsky? Vygotsky? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I don't know why I thought he, that. I just he, uh, he, he random was, question. He, he, I, 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 I don't think... I don't think he was alive at the time. I <laughs> I, I was interested in this type stuff, or or he was already very very famous and unavailable <laughs> kind of scientist. <laughs> no. I, I I I did work with my 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 bodies, so the people of my age and my kind of my level of. Of scientific kind of background or whatever, yeah. Uh, who was Vadim? I'm not sure how to pronounce this guy. Gerasimov. I yeah, think Gerasimov. Gerasimov. Yes. Yeah, 
Uh, he was a schoolboy who who came uh, for 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 summer practice in computer center. He was absolutely genius guy, and he was recommended for me to do the the conversion of of my game from Electronica 60 to 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 PC. So I didn't work with PC that time. Uh, the, that at that time, so I didn't know this computer. And what is very funny, it was no, it was no. I didn't know any easy way to 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 convert my my code, my Pascal code for for the game into into PC. They they don't have any compatible kind of media to to. To, to make the conversion and uh, and I was very uh, and I was very surprised when Vadim did it in in no time in, in, in three days he showed me my 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 my, uh, my version of Tetris working on PC and uh, and uh, that was uh, that was very uh, very impressive for me and we keep working together for for almost, almost a year to to try to use the advantages of PC to make this uh, to make this version more more attractive beautiful and uh, and better working so yeah. what sort of things did he add to the game well basically at the time he he stepped in the game was ready it it, it working full Full force with all the levels, with everything uh, on on my Electronica 60. Uh, then we then we work together. Uh, so so as design, he didn't add anything, but but technically we had lots of uh, problem which uh, which he re he was really helpful for uh, for me to solve. For example, we at that time. The, the computer was kind of zoo was uh, was very many variation of uh, so, so the, 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 the new version of IBM PC coming more fast computer uh, and uh, we need to kind of calibrate the speed of, of the game very accurately and uh, on the on the low level of of uh, operating sy system access it was really hard to do we need to go, to go very deep in 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 chips in order to to make a very um, kind of good calibration of the stuff then the graphic stuff we need to decide how to arrange the screen um, the, there was three mode of the screen and 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 other monitors come, which kind of uh, have their own video cards, which needs to be adjusted somehow. So lots of those technical stuff, uh, Vadim, Vadim really helped me to, to fix and to do. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week with a third part of this of this uh, interview with Mr. Pashinov. A lot of great stuff coming up, including uh, his about his other games uh, that are not quite as well known as Tetris, but are very interesting nonetheless. So stay tuned. Lots of great stuff coming up. As always, I want to thank you very, very, very much, guys. If you have supported Matt Chat on the Patreon site, don't ask much. A, a buck a show is fine. Uh, if you haven't supported the show and like to, just go over to the Patreon site in the show notes. It takes about two minutes uh, to set that up. And remember, you set the amount. Whatever you think the show is worth, I really appreciate it. And thank you very much. All right, what about that news from the Matt Cave? All right, so some pretty big news. Uh, goodoldgames.com, uh, which who I'm affiliated with, those guys actually, uh, they have released a, uh, I guess they're calling it an archive. It's three packs or three bundles of uh, the old Forgotten Realms games. Uh, they have the Gold Box. Most of the Gold Box, I think they're lacking a few of the titles there, maybe the Dragonlance series, but they've got 
the ones that, the, the best ones in my opinion. Uh, they've also got the Eye of the Beholder uh, black box games in a separate pack, and they have another pack with Dungeon Hack and Menzo Baranza. Anyway, I didn't write down the price here, but just remember if you want to pick those up, please use the link in the show notes, and that's my affiliate link, so then uh, the show will get a little kicked back, but it won't cost you anything extra. But I, from what I've, uh, actually I've got one, I've got it myself, I haven't even had a chance to, to look at what they've included there, uh, but the reviews that I've seen are, are good, they have the, uh, all the PDFs there, they even have the scans of the old code wheels, so it looks like they've done a really good job with that. Also in other news, the Seven Dragons Saga, you might remember my interviews with the TSI uh, guys a while back, uh, David Shelley and, as the lead designer, uh, they are apparently still working on the Seven Dragons Saga game. They haven't given up, and they're apparently getting closer to a, a prototype, uh, which they seem to be... I'm sort of reading between the lines here, and it's a little speculating uh, speculation here, but I think they're trying. To, they're planning to do another Kickstarter uh, once they get this prototype uh, up and running. So keep an eye on that. Very encouraging to hear that those guys are still uh, hard at it. And then finally, uh, gameplay of the movie uh, what I did with Bill of Judas way back... Uh, that is just now hitting PBS, and they have a DVD that you can buy. Finally, uh, I think it's still a couple days away, but you can pre-order it anyway. The DVD version of Gameplay the Movie, Story of the Video Game Revolution. That's at shoppbs.org, shoppbs.org, and it's $19.99. Not sure how much the shipping and handling is. I think that you can get some free shipping if you buy a couple other things, but uh, anyway, that's what it is. Uh, so let me know what you think of that if you order that. Uh, hopefully they'll send me some copies, but I'm not really going to hold my breath on that. But hopefully, <laughs> if they do, I'll be happy to share those. But uh, a lot of you guys have been asking about that movie, so there you go. All right, what about that ale of the week? Uh, well, my brother and grandpa came to see me last week, and my uh, brother picked up some ales. We went to a little uh, shop around here, and he got this uh, for me, this uh, floating fire. Now this is a Viking funeral ceremonial ale. I guess he liked the, the Viking thing, kind of made sense with my uh, helmet and horn and everything. Uh, a hop heavy offering from Furthermore Brewing. Uh, they're out of Black River Falls, Wisconsin. Now unfortunately they do not have anything else here on the bottle. <laughs> no alcohol content or even what really type of ale it is. Ceremonial, ceremonial ale, whatever that is. So really, I don't know much about this other than what I've just read to you. So let, let's get it open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this floating fire here in the rather excellent drinking horn. I'm trying to keep it well away from any open flames. Definitely has that Black River Falls, Wisconsin aroma. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, it smells kind of like a... What is that? A little bit of a scotch, a bourbon barrel kind of... Uh, Aroma to this uh, it smells a little bit like a scotch, but maybe a little bit of a coffee notes, maybe something like a, a coffee stout, some cherry. It actually smells pretty good. Um, not the maybe a, a little bit of a blueberry uh, there. I'm not really detecting any strong alcohol fumes or anything like that, so I'm not expecting this to be uh, really strong. But uh, let's give it a taste and, and see what it's like. Definitely a bit on the bitter side. It starts off bitter, then it gets uh, real sweet. Uh, you taste a little bit of a, a little bit of a toffee-like flavor there. Actually, not bad. A little bit of a cocoa uh, flavor. It's actually not bad at all. I'll try it again here. Maybe, maybe a little bit of that bourbon bourbon flavor. I'm kind of wondering that if this might have been. Uh, aged in bourbon barrels, and a lot of the uh, brewers are doing that nowadays. Uh, definitely some coffee, cherry uh, flavors to this kind of dominating. I'll try it one more time here. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. A little bit on the bitter side, but that goes away real quick, and then you get the, the sort of cocoa, chocolate, coffee, a little bit of a scotch and cherry flavor there. Actually, it's, it's quite nice. I like this. Uh, I'm not really sure what the alcohol content is on this. I just can't really tell. It must sort of be, I'm thinking maybe on the low end, 
Uh, I have no idea. I'm just going to guess maybe somewhere around uh, five, maybe as much as six. But I'm thinking more around uh, five percent on this. You guys can check me. Uh, I could be totally off because it is a little bit of a, a sometimes a, that bitter. Uh, bitterness can conceal the alcohol taste, so really don't know. But anyway, it's really tasty. I'm going to go four out of five drinking horns on this uh, floating fire. A really tasty, something different. I like the combination of flavors and the uh, Viking ceremonial Viking ale or whatever. It's a pretty cool concept. So, uh, four out of five drinking horns on this. So I was looking for quotes by Pythagoras, and I found a really interesting one. I think we can all relate to this quote. Uh, I know I definitely can. It goes something like this. There is nothing so easy, but that it becomes difficult when you do it reluctantly. See you guys next week. They're just so alien. The aliens are so alien. You look at them, and they're alien. Good thing I didn't take you to the deep south.